Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to Biafra Freedom and the Slave Master Part 5. Important notice, this video is not a propaganda or entertainment video. It is for educational, informational and reference purposes only. Please look for the referenced sources and study them yourself. Remember, every man's hand was against his neighbor and the weakest went to the wall, or rather to the slave ship waiting on the coast, Major A.F. Mokola Ferryman, and this is from the book British West Africa, published 1900, and from Keith Johnston in 1878, at the mention of the word Africa, we involuntarily think exclusively of the pure Negro type, which in consequence of long established opinions, we are apt to look upon as the only occupant of this continent and in truth a certain uniformity unmistakably characterizes its inhabitants sufficiently accounting for if not justifying the fact that earlier and less thorough research was satisfied with comprising all of them under the one general denomination of negroes and this is from the book africa by Keith Johnston and published 1878. The Law and the Lie When a law supports slavery and slave trade, do you not wonder who could have made that law? And was it the slave or the slave owner that could have made the law? Or do you imagine that both could have made it together? If the law says A or B should be a slave, do you ever wonder what criteria was used to make the law that determines that A or B should be a slave to someone else? When the European slave masters, especially the British, claim to have ended the slave trade, do you ever wonder what and what they did or changed that amounted to stopping the slave trade? Did they stop by abrogating the laws that supported the slave trade or they did something different? Have you tried to find out what and what they did and who and who were behind it before they could have even stopped it? And did they change the law? And if not, does it mean that the same law that supported the slave trade was the same laws they lived under after the slave trade? Or they simply changed the definition of the slave trade and slavery? When the laws in the slave master's books, be it the Quran or Al Quran of Muhammad, or the Bible supported the slave trade. Do you wonder who could have written those religious books? Could they be the same as those who wrote the laws that supported the slave trade too? If the Arab religion of Mohammedanism and the European religion of Christianity both supported, facilitated and justified the slave trade, what does it tell us about the European or English deity God and the Arab deity Allah? The law written and unwritten. Is there a difference between a written and an unwritten law? Beyond being written or unwritten, if a law says that group A or B are slaves to groups C or D, what difference does it make, whether written or unwritten? If books of doubtful and questionable authorship and origin are required for the pursuit of happiness in Christianity and Mohammedanism, which books did Adam, Abraham and Moses read and how did people do the same before the invention of writing? Why does the world's biggest slave trader, the British, that's the English, not have a written constitution? When the Mohammedans, now called Muslims and Christians, classified and labeled the Negroes as pagans and started capturing and exporting them as slaves, what criteria did they use to classify them as such? How did the slave trade work in both written and unwritten laws? How does the written laws in countries in what was Negro land and Guinea compare with the slave laws in the slave masters countries like the English, that's England, and the Dutch, and of course the plantation that became the United States of America today? How do the laws in both sides compare? We are looking at such laws as could have established companies like the Royal African Company of England and the Dutch West India Company. Biafra and Ambazonia 
please take note of the fact that much of what we'll say will focus on Biafra, but because they were both one and the same in the past, but divided by the slave master, that is why we always mention both together. And so, remember our question, who between the slave master and the slave needs the other? If the slave needs the slave master to survive, why does the slave master kill slaves when they seek or ask for freedom? Remember when we said the Biafra and Ambazonia quest for freedom today will expose those responsible for the slave trade as well as the religions of Christianity and Mohammedanism as false. Have you observed how closely together the slave master, especially the British and their accomplices, especially the Arabs, the Fulanese, work against Biafra and Ambazonia today? If you are, say, above 20 years of age, you probably witnessed or heard when the September 11 incident happened in the United States. So when you watch and see that plantation, today called the United States of America, remember they are dead. Do you ever wonder why the Negroes do not have memorials to remember their own dead? What about the Biafra genocide perpetrated by the slave master, especially the British, and their slave hunting accomplices, the Arabs, especially the Fulanese? Why do they not allow the Negroes and Biafra remember the evil against them, where more people died than in September 11? Do you ever wonder why they do that? Most recently, you probably heard how Mazen Namdekano was abducted from Kenya. Why do they not tell us who abducted him, why, and who asked them to? When the Fulani Attorney General of Nigeria announced how they did it, proudly claiming that he was coming to face trial because he jumped bail, which we all know is a lie. Remember, the Fulanis are placed in those positions by the British who were their slave hunting accomplices during the slave trade. So do you still entertain any doubts as to who was behind the abduction of Mazen Namdekano? Why do you think the same British who sponsored the genocide against Biafra in the 60s would stoop so low to connive with the Nigerian government controlled by his slave hunting accomplices to kidnap Namdekano just because he is talking about freedom. Remember, this was exactly how the slave master, especially the same British, treated the abolitionists and the Quakers when they condemned the slave trade. If you doubt what we're saying, conduct your research. The IPOB, which stands for Indigenous People of Biafra, the DOS, which stands for Directorate of State under the Indigenous People of Biafra, Nigeria, and Britain. If during the slave trade proper, the British would go after abolitionists or Quakers and others against the evil of the slave trade, and today they are doing the same against those who ask for freedom in Biafra and Ambazonia, what does that tell us? And please remember our usual question to you. If we were to write you a letter today demanding that you give us our freedom or liberty, you're gonna either laugh it off or assume that the letter must have been addressed to you wrongly. But if for some reason you had somebody against his will in your house and the person wrote you such a letter or even made such a demand, you will certainly react differently. And that is the case with Biafra and Ambazonia today. While the so-called African Americans who were the victims of that man's inhumanity to man, the evil of the slave trade, are busy denying how they are not from Africa. The same slave master is also busy killing people for seeking freedom in that area. What does that tell us? And so, why does the slave master's fake news media like the BBC and CNN report Biafra freedom agitations as secessionists, separatists, rebels, etc., but report Scottish independence movement as nationalists? Why do you think they do that? Remember, if they were not working together, you would have seen some disparities in their reportage. But in this case, you see that the BBC, the CNN, the Al Jazeera, and all the slave masters media, and that is those that were behind the slave trade, all report in unison with the same terms, derogatory in its sense, that they are separatists, secessionists, or rebels. Now remember to ask, who are they separating from and who created them? Who are they rebelling against and who made them rulers and judges over them? 
why also is the Nigerian media forced to report lies in favor of the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices? And never forget, the Nigerian media is so controlled that they have to report using the same terms as the slave master. For example, they are forced to call their siblings rebels. Rebels against who? A stooge, a government imposed on them by the slave master and his slave hunter accomplices. Killings, slavery and freedom. When you see the Nigerian government or Cameroonian government, which we all know are controlled by the Europeans, kill innocent men, women and children, supposedly their own people, to keep either Cameroon one or Nigeria one. Do you wonder why they do it? Imagine killing some of your children to keep that family together, as the descendants of the slave hunters put it, to keep Nigeria one. They can slaughter an entire community, massacre in thousands. Like we told you, the army were the slave hunters. They lack humanity and common sense. So when they are saying those things, they have no shame because they don't know how foolish it makes them look in the sight of those who have a little bit of common sense or humanity. But if during the slave trade proper, there was the English, that's the British, in the genocide against the Biafra in the 60s, there was the same English, the British, and in the freedom of Biafra today, there is also the same British hiding behind their slave hunting accomplices, the Arabs, and that's the Fulanese, to kill those that ask for freedom or to arrest whoever is championing the cause of freedom of Biafra. What does that tell us? And before we go into what we have today, that is to prove that the DOS in IPOB is heavily compromised and currently in the hands of the slave master, let us reference Stanford's Compendium of Geography and Travel, Africa by Keith Johnston and this was published 1878. And here we say that the African races are in fully as backward a state of development as are the natural features of the regions occupied by them. A dimension of the world, Africa, we involuntarily think exclusively of the pure Negro type, which, in consequence of long established opinions, we are apt to look upon as the only occupant of this continent. And in truth, a certain uniformity unmistakably characterizes its inhabitants, sufficiently accounting for if not justifying the fact that earlier and less thorough research was satisfied with comprising all of them under one general denomination of Negroes. It remained for more recent and more accurate investigations to show that the pure Negro type occupies comparatively but a small portion of Africa scarcely spreading anywhere south of the equator. The whole country south of the Negroes is mainly peopled by the Bantu tribes, differing in speech altogether from them and including such races as the Kafirs, the Bokanas, the Basutos, etc., but not the Hottentots and Bushmen. Our interest here is for the so called African Americans that think that people like the Nkaloe are not working for the slave master to understand that Africa has numerous races different from the Negroes proper and that the appellation African was actually created for deception which we shall look at in a subsequent video. And further down it says in West Africa we meet with the Fula tribes and north of the Negroes some Hamitic and Shemitic peoples who have migrated hither from the east to the same Hamitic stock belong also the Galas and the Somalis of the extreme eastern corner of Africa. This should help you understand that there are numerous races in Africa. When they say African, what about the Arabs? What about the Fulanese? What about those who actually did the capturing? What about those you see today working closely with the slave master against the Negroes? Ask yourself this simple question. And a quick look at the map from the book, we see where it says Felatas just around the confluence today where you see Hausa and you see Sudan on top of it. Remember, the Negroes have been pushed down all the way from what was Negro land down to where they are today. This is why you see the slave master and his global warming claiming that the Lake Chad has dried and commissions his slave hunting accomplices, that's the Arabs, the Fulanese, to move their cattle down south because they have to come under a pretext the same way you saw the serpent and the devil code. 
in the slave master's book. So they have to find a pretext under which to come. You saw that during the COVID lockdown last year, the same group were shipping their men down to the south for the Penis Jihad. You need to bear this in mind. They work closely together with the slave master because they are still on the march together against the Negroes. And below, while taking note of where he wrote Philatas at the confluence and long enough, remember they are not indigenous to the area, but came there as slave hunters and on the behest of the European and Arab slave hunters. So you see where it says Dahomey. This is the side that is overseeing the conquest of the southwest of what you call Nigeria today. So when we tell you about Odudua being a controlled agitation, you have to understand that the slave master has a lot of enemies within in there their agitation is not real is a controlled agitation and so if you saw how they were pushing their slave hunting accomplices to the south during the covid lockdown which you saw in these trucks that's the same way they were pushing the dahomians into that southwest so they have a mixed people now without knowing it there are negroes there no doubt there were even the former slaves that returned from brazil to what is now lagos because Lagos was not part of Nigeria until 1907. And please take note of the fact that the kidnap of Unan the Khan was not by the Nigerian government, but by the British, who hide behind their slave hunting accomplices. It doesn't matter whether you believe us or not, their actions, their inactions and utterances will expose them further. And please never forget that the Fulanese do not have that capacity without the British, the same way they couldn't have captured the Negroes without European assistance during the slave trade. And so let us reference British West Africa, Its Rise and Progress by Major A.F. Mokola Ferryman, and this was published in 1900. And here we see that the map in this book shows the same area in question, but you notice that Negroes proper are now very close to the Confluence town as against the Fulas who are on top. Remember, the Fulanese are just the foot soldiers to the British. They are the slave hunters. They came there as slave hunters, which we challenge you to investigate and put it in the comment section that it's a lie. And you can further see that it says Hamites on top, Libyan branch, Semites, Arabic branch, Hermetic branch, and all that. Remember, like we told you, the slave master's books were things he concocted. The Almighty never wrote any book and couldn't have written any book. Just imagine your parents, as earthly and sinful as they could be, writing a book instructing that some of your siblings should be slaves to others without any reason, without any justification and above all, the ones they claim that should be slaves are the ones that even make efforts to be obedient to your parents. But instead, your parents turn around to write a book saying they should be slaves to those that are not obedient to them. What does that tell you? Above all, if it was genuinely from the Almighty, they won't need to come with guns and bombs and bullets. The same way you see them fighting to keep Biafra and uh, Ambazonia under Cameroon and Nigeria today. If it was the natural thing, they wouldn't need to go that far. They wouldn't need to kill parents, kill aged people to capture the slaves and be selling them like cattle. And to better understand why they are doing it, remember like we told you, the slave master is a subtle beast. Everything you see happening, including the abduction or kidnap of Mazin and the Kano, was facilitated, masterminded, and done by the British government, especially the English. And it is now incumbent upon all of us to start asking why, what is the interest of the British? Remember, these are the same people that claim how they are civilized, they are Great Britain, name it whatever they say, they are the ones that ended the slave trade and all that. Ask yourself, why are they still part of every evil that is happening to the Negroes in the area today? The Biafra genocide was done by the British. A British Prime Minister named Harold Wilson was behind the starvation of innocent women and children using the likes of Gowon and Obasanjo. Yes, those ones may not be Negroes. They may not be sensible enough, but let the slave master come out openly and show who he is instead of hiding behind people who lack humanity and common sense to perpetuate his evil. And so here we see nowhere of late years has our empire expanded so rapidly as in the great continent which forms the subject of this work. States with populations so dense as those of modern Europe 
realizing that their overflow can only be accommodated by founding other states have naturally turned their eyes towards the comparatively unexplored and unexploited regions of the globe and it remained to Africa to furnish the wherewithal for this final scramble for new territory amongst the great powers. And if you understood what you just read, and remember we told you that there is no sensible person in the Nigerian army or the Cameroonian army. Those are conditioned slave hunters. They lack humanity and common sense. That's why you see people like Obasanjo, as old as they are, the little European boys can call them, give them guns to kill their people and they do. If you don't know how that rubs off on you, it presents black people as people who are not sensible enough because it takes a fool. It takes an animal to be given guns and bullets to kill their siblings over nothing and they do so. So that's what they use people like Obasanjo them to do. Remember he did the same thing in the 60s. He is doing the same thing today because they are conditioned in the military with that lack of humanity and common sense. If you have anybody in the Nigerian army and you believe he is sensible enough as a human being, please bring him here to listen to us and let's ask him what and what he does. And he goes further to say, the century now drawing to its close has witnessed such vast acquisitions on the part of Europe of hitherto savage or at best only semi-civilized portions of the dark continent that but little now remains to be parceled out and tracts which but a few years ago were deemed worthless have of late become the subject of jealous dispute. Even the Sahara, with its barren west and its clouds of drifting sand, has been included in a sphere of influence. A comparison of the map of Africa of a hundred years ago with that of today will give the reader an idea of what has been going on and will prove to him that England has taken no more than her share of the plunder, for as these pages will show, she has acquired but a third of what she is justly entitled to. Remember, these are people coming to steal other people's land. Like we told you, they are slave hunting accomplices. They lack humanity and common sense. You can see the Fulani. They are killing people over land that the slave master is aiding them to do. So apparently, when they use the Fulani to exterminate the Negroes, they will now come and exterminate the Fulanese. So this is why you see that the same Fulanese fighting to keep Nigeria won are the same Fulanese fighting to keep Cameroon one, and they are sponsored, facilitated and supported by the slave master and the Arab world as well. That is ideally the Christians and Muslims together, the same way they did the slave trade. And never forget that England was the world's biggest slave trading empire. So that's why you see that they are the ones sponsoring the Fulanese who were their slave hunting accomplices during the slave trade. Remember, they also facilitated and sponsored the kidnap of Mazen Namdekano. Because without the British, especially the English, the Fulanese do not have the capacity to do all they are doing. They have the capacity to kill, no doubt, but the weapons, the logistics, the propaganda and the lies are provided by the slave master. And it goes further here to say, and were the country to be divided in proportion to the money and lives spent by each European power in exploration and exploitation, then it is no idle boast to say England could lay claim to all Africa south of the Sahara and Egypt, if not indeed to Egypt itself. Remember, these people are laying claim to other people's land. So what can be a worse armed robber, thief, name it, than these people? So that's why you see they hide behind their slave hunting accomplices who lack humanity and common sense to perpetuate their evil. Remember this is coded in the Genesis story where the devil allegedly spoke through a snake. Have you ever seen a snake speaking before? The answer is no. So it's just a code that tells them to be subtle about it. And the essence of being subtle is to do it so that you won't know. So that's why they hide behind their slave hunting accomplices. So when you are asked tomorrow, you're going to say Nandikan was abducted in Kenya. But you won't know that it is the British that is actually behind the abduction, the kidnap and whatever you see going on there. And it goes further to say, to England alone is due the present position of Europe in Africa. Most other nations have merely gained a footing in the land at the expense of England, yet they make every endeavor nowadays to wrest from us lands which, by right of priority of discovery and priority of treaties, 
made with the natives can be claimed by no one but Great Britain. So what can be great about a man stealer? The British were the world's biggest slave traders, biggest slave hunters. They are still doing it today. Wherever they go, it's violence, bloodshed, and man's inhumanity to man. So why do they call them great, if we may ask? Perhaps great in evil, but otherwise, if you can tell us what makes the British great, we are willing to listen to it. Because if you were to study the history, the truth, and see what these people have done, especially the English, there is no way you will be happy calling them great. Because you will ask, what are they great in? And please don't get us wrong here. The good ones do not know what is happening. That's why they always hide behind their slave hunting accomplices who lack humanity and common sense. So they can send an old man like Obasanjo because he was in the army. The army were the slave hunters, like we told you. They lack humanity, they lack common sense. And there is no better way to say it. And we challenge you to it as well. They always send them to come and say the rubbish that will paint the black man as an animal. But they won't know because of that lack of humanity and common sense, unfortunately. And it goes further here to say, until 1884, Africa south of the Sahara was of little account in the eyes of Europe. England was quietly improving and extending her various positions. France seemed contented with her Congo territory. Portugal with those scraps of the continent which she had managed to retain and the boundaries of the Congo and Orange Free States and the Transvaal were clearly defined. In the above year, however, there fell a thunderbolt in Europe. Germany, desiring to found a colonial empire, suddenly annexed Nakaland and Damaraland on the southwest coast, the Cameroons and Togoland on the west coast, and proclaimed a protectorate over an immense tract of country adjacent to Zanzibar on the east coast. This undreamt of action on the part of Germany brought about what has been called the scramble for Africa and from it has arisen a series of conferences and boundary commissions to decide for the three principal scramblers, England, France and Germany, the niceties of spheres of influence and hinterland. So we just want you to look at this to understand the background why they are all united against Biafra and Ambazonia. They are defending their slave farms. That's what you're seeing happening. You don't need to believe us. We shall prove them to you. So this will help you understand why they went and kidnapped Nandekano. It will also help you understand why we are telling you to 100% accuracy that the DOS of IPOB is controlled by them as a stance. And so please take note of what it says here. And it says, Thus has the partition of Africa among the three great European powers been brought about and at the present moment there remains hardly a square mile of the continent to which one or other power cannot lay claim either by right of hinterland or by right of treaty. The following table gives approximately in square miles the areas of the African possessions of the various European powers as well as the areas of those territories which are still independent or unappropriated. So when you see the Nigerian army telling you they are defending their territory, it's a lie. Those are the slave hunters. They lack humanity and common sense. The Europeans use them to defend their interests. The army itself was an Arab and Mohammedan institution. The Negroes never had an army. If you doubt us, conduct your research and post it in the comment section to say this was what you found and this is where you think we lied or we got it wrong.